Thanks, Bob. Keep talking. Uh, welcome, Dr. Natasha Kelly, to Talking Objects Lab. How have you been in these crazy times of, of pandemic? It's been over a year now. Yeah. How, how have you navigated um, this past year? Um, it's quite interesting because my, my last book, not this book, the book before this book, The Comet, right. was based on a story by W.E.B. Du Bois, which he wrote 100 years ago in 1920 during the last pandemic. And W.E.B. Du Bois, the famous black American... Black American, U.S. American scholar, sociologist, sociologist yes. activist, one of the founders of the NAACP, and a lot more. He studied in Germany, here in Berlin at as Humboldt well. At University, At yes. the Humboldt yes. University. And he wrote a short story called The Comet um, 100 years ago. And I, I, I organized a symposium in um, 2018 on Afrofuturism, mm -hmm. because he's one of the pioneers of Afrofuturism. Yes. So um, two years later, we created a reader out of all the talks and, and presentations that were there. And that was published last year during the pandemic. When it just began. When it just yeah, began. Yeah. So it was like 100 years later, after the last pandemic, after Du Bois wrote this short story of the comet during the pandemic, we now have this reflection of what he's saying in the comet. Yes. And that was quite interesting because um, this comet drops on New York, destroys New York, and there are only two survivors, a black man named Jim and mm -hmm. a white woman named Julia. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Jim goes seeking for other survivors and he finds Julia. And Julia, because we're talking about 1920, mm -hmm. she's a white woman. She's like, oh, no, I can't, you know, be dealing with this black man. That's, mm -hmm. that's not possible. Mm -hmm. But then she realizes, OK, we're the only two survivors, so I'm going to have to figure this out and then um, finds or, or sees his humanity. And then they go f searching for other people and find um, Jim, um, Julia's father and her fiance, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. And then in, among this, this white mob, this mm -hmm. group of white people mm -hmm. who were ready to lynch Jim mm -hmm. no? for talking to this mm -hmm. white woman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but then Julia intervenes. She says, no, no, he saved me. Don't harm him. And then um, the father gives him money and says, go away, go away, go away. And then behind the mob, Ju Jim's wife comes with a dead baby in her arm. And that's the end of the story. So the moral of the story, you know, 100 years later. later. <laughs> one century later. One, la yeah. one century later is that we're in exactly a similar pandemic, all having been forced to wear masks, exactly like we did 100 years ago. Yes. And after this pandemic in, in, in the 1919s, 1920s, mm -hmm. followed what they called the Red Summer. Yes. And the Red Summer was like um, a summer of, of, of um, white terrorist attacks against black people yeah. and uh, black people moving to the streets and protesting. And now we have Corona and we have the Black Lives Matter movement and black people taking to the streets 100 years ago. So it's literally like history is repeating him itself. Yeah. And what Du Bois is actually saying is that a, a comet can drop on, on, the, on the planet, destroy yeah. New York, but it will not destroy the racist structures yeah. because they are man-made yeah. or woman-made. Yeah. And it's up to us to re deconstruct these um, these um, these power structures, yeah. and this is um, kind of like the topic that I had last year, yeah. um, based on this book and the symposium that I did, and uh, reflecting on all of history of, of history actually repeating itself, and being set in um, an Afrocentric timeline where time is circular. There is no beginning and no end of time. It, um, in 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 based in Sankofa philosophy. Yeah. We yeah. go back into the past, take the past into the present to be able to create future. So time is always circular, circular and moving, but in a yeah. Eurocentric context, time yeah. is linear. Yeah. No? So there's a beginning and an end, a yeah. beginning and an end. Yeah. And this proved itself actually right last year, that we're still in this cycle and that it's up to us literally to get out of this hole. To get out of this. To get out of as this. Quickly as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> it's so that was my reflection of Corona, of corona actually. Corona and how yeah. you've lived through it so mm -hmm. far. 
It's interesting that you were mentioning W.E.B. Du Bois because I think so much of your work is also reflecting what he was doing. Your work is intersecting um, in academia, art and activism. Yeah. And it almost yeah. feels like you cannot but work in this interdisciplinary way, especially when it comes yeah. to the German context. Because yeah. yes, we've um, had the uh, horrible death of George Floyd last year and that was causing you know, global protest. Uh, but then we also have these very specific, still very specific national moments, you know, and also in Germany, um, we need more black discourse and we need more black people that work in various institutions. And you are a very imp important voice at this, oh, at this point. <laughs> you, you definitely are. Um, and I was wondering whether you could comment a little bit about why you cannot but work in this interdisciplinary way. Why isn't it just enough to say, I'm an academic and I do you know, sociology and, and study the lives of black people in Germany from that lens, mm -hmm. but you work in this very broad scope. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, I would actually say that there is no space for black knowledge in German academia. Mm. Um, being based in Afrocentricity, Pan-Africanism and Afrofuturism, mm. these are things that are non-existent in Germany. Um, they, they kind of like will count that a bit to pop culture maybe mm -hmm. or to um, political radicalism, but they don't really see it as um, as a as a knowledge, as knowledge based. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And um, the the knowledge system or academia in Germany is is literally um, it's Eurocentric and nothing else. No. So their idea of diversity is to include other perspectives into Eurocentricity, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. not have mm -hmm. them parallel to it. Like, mm -hmm. like in, in the US, you have Black Studies Institutes or Africana mm -hmm. Studies Institutes yeah. that have a different starting point in Afrocentricity, um, but, but not in an Eurocentric context. Mm -hmm. that, literally doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So because I don't have this, I'm always seeking spaces where I can drop my knowledge. And um, I've, I don't know where I haven't been, actually. I mean, <laughs> I've, it's literally... You've it's like, covered a lot. I have. I, have. I've yes. covered yeah. theatre. I've covered film. I'm a curator. I do a lot in, in visual arts. I'm, uh, I do art myself. Do, um, so I've, been, I've, I've worked in museums. I'm still in academia because that's actually what I do, f kind of like first. And where everything I'm an began educator. Too, in a way, and where okay. everything began, yeah. 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 And um, I teach, I'm an activist, I'm out on the street. I'm, there is literally no place we can call our academic home. Yeah. So that's why I'm literally everywhere. But the topics are the same. So it doesn't really matter in which field I am. Mm -hmm. I'm always dealing with black German history, mm -hmm. past, present and future. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm always just dropping it in these spaces and just leaving traces mm -hmm. for the next generations to come and really institutionalize it. Because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the generations before me, like Maya Heem and Katarina yes. Ogontoye, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah. No, and I remember having a, a conversation with Katarina Ogontoye once where she told me that um, she also wanted to do her PhD, mm -hmm. but she didn't have the chance to do her PhD. And Maya Yim always also wrote about that, that yeah. she couldn't find a supervisor yeah. um, to, to supervise her in, I think she wanted to do um, racism in ethnology, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, she couldn't find a supervisor. So because I mean, they, they wouldn't accept it as a relevant topic. They wouldn't, exactly. Study, like yeah, the they, wouldn't, they wouldn't accept it. So I'm like a generation after them, yeah. and I at least found a supervisor yeah. who wasn't taking me seriously, but I did find one, and I was, had the possibility to, to do my PhD, but that's where it ends for this generation. Mm -hmm. no, so I won't be, you no know, get no, no further, no. Career. And, no, uh, it yeah. would be, it, it, it kind of like for me, well, let's put it this, this way. I've literally... Um, you know, made peace with myself, that mm -hmm. it's not going to be a professor, a full professor, or, mm -hmm. and definitely not in Germany. I would have to go to the state, which yes. I am in yes. the States. I'm officially a professor, yes. but yes. here it's, I'm not. It's, it's, the structures it's, are very different. Yeah, yes. it doesn't, it literally doesn't make sense. When I, when I talk to my, my colleagues in the States, and I mean, I've just now published my seventh book, yeah. and they look at me and they're like, your seventh book, and you're not a professor? Yeah. You know, this, it just literally doesn't make sense. Yeah. 
So, um, but you yeah. found then also throughout the past years, uh, art spaces, environments where mm -hmm. your work has been more acknowledgeable. Well, you could also like, I feel like grow as an artist as well. And I was mm -hmm. wondering whether you could talk about that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that interesting for you? Like, why are these arts, mm -hmm. these art spaces interesting for you? Mm -hmm. And what work can you do that is yeah. still very important? I think the big difference between um, art and academia in Germany is that Germans tend to believe what they see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in academia, I'm always, mm -hmm. um, they always say that I'm, you know, just interpreting, that it's not facts, that mm -hmm. it's not, you know, um, because, but in art, a picture says more than a thousand words. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of like cut that part of the discussion <laughs> and then just literally dive in because, right. because right. the pictures are actually showing what your, um, or art or artwork is showing what you're trying to um, discourse or yeah. to analyze yeah. Yeah. in academe in an academic field. Yeah. So I think this is the huge difference. And as a communication scientist, I started out with, you know, um, linguistic communication, language, language analyzes, discourse analyzes, and um, which actually took me to visual communication. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that there's no racism and no structures in the arts. Mm. There definitely is. But trust me, they're not as bad as in academia. Mm. No? And mm. I just found a way um, in art, I'm allowed to be creative, where in academia, I'm always the critic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm always in this opposition mm -hmm. uh, position. Mm -hmm. And in the arts, I have more space and more freedom. To, and it doesn't matter which art, if it's performing arts, visual arts, film, I have more space to actually be creative and tell stories, mm -hmm. which I can't do in academia mm -hmm. because they're disqualified, mm -hmm. no? Because they mm -hmm. don't meet the, the academic standards. Criteria, no? yeah. But yeah. Um, and you were just earlier saying too that you think that, you know, also the next upcoming generations might have it a little different when it comes to a full like academic career. Mm -hmm. But what do you think does it still take in Germany to even begin establishing institutes you know of black studies that also not only copy content from the states or the uk maybe yeah. but start here because this is something it's very complicated because at the same time i think it's very important for us as black people and people of african descent to exchange knowledge from the states and the uk and do it yeah. globally but we also have to be specific yeah. to the german context definitely yeah. and what does it take and it's a long way germany's tends to be behind. Yeah, we're 100 De years late. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, I'm always right, saying yeah. one or two decades, but maybe it's even more, which is yeah. unfortunate. No, it's, it but... is more, because this is actually what the comet proved. We mm -hmm. are 100 years late in the discourse, yeah. because during that time in the US, you had the racial turn, which W.E.B. Yes. Du Bois introduced, and then a lot of works followed. We haven't even reached this racial no, turn. Yeah, we're still yeah. having a discussion about if race is social, a social category or not, because mm -hmm. people still have in their minds that it's something biological and that also leads to people believing that racism is biological but it's not racism is discursive what does so, that mean that it's discursive in the um, yeah that it, it, it that it you that it um it practically you need stories mm -hmm. and histories mm -hmm. to be able to trace the structures of racism and one of these traces or mm. one of the discourses is a biological discourse, mm -hmm. yeah? But they reduce racism only to this biological discourse. Mm -hmm. And that's literally reducing the whole power mm -hmm. system behind mm -hmm. it. No, where people just reduce you to the color of your skin. Or I'm like, no, nobody's talking to me about the color of my skin mm -hmm. apart from my makeup ask. Artist, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like because it just it just leads you nowhere, mm -hmm. and this is the whole biological um, idea that it's reduced to in Germany, and they don't see that it's much larger than that. That we mm -hmm. have political discourses behind it, academic discourses behind it, of course, a biological discourse behind it as well. As well yeah. We have economic discourses. I mean, mm -hmm. hello, colonialism, yes. enslavement were economic mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. So this is an economic discourse. Mm -hmm. So we have to start understanding that racism is discursive and even saying that to a US audience they're going to think wow you're crazy because um but that's yeah. how far behind we are yeah. and but we're then, literally talking about a gap of 100, 100 years, years. Yeah. but then one could say and I think this is 
is somewhat also a, a false argument sometimes. So there's this argument I think a lot of Germans still have or think that post-1945 everything that had to do with race and racism will forever be over. Mm. And that after what happened, particularly during the Nazi regime, this country will just not be able to be racist, mm -hmm. which is false. Mm. Um, and maybe you can, you can explain a little bit why and, and what we need in order to um, get this discourse going again. Mm. I think that um, you're, you're literally right when you say that the, that the, the concepts need to be translated. You know? mm. This is something that, that hasn't happened yet, so that we don't understand that race is a social construct that goes further back than no, National Socialism in a German context, is actually rooted and structured and politicized and instrumentalized in German colonialism when they had the so-called mixed marriage laws mm -hmm. in the colonies mm -hmm. where uh, white Germans weren't allowed to, to marry, white German men weren't allowed to marry African women and the children out of these relationships, they had to be um, listed in, in a so-called mixed race mm. list. Mm -hmm. And if they were not in this list, they didn't have a chance to, be Germ to become German citizens at all. And if they were, they had the possibility, but most of them didn't really um, um, yeah, gain German mm -hmm. citizenship mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. way around, when a white woman, because white women at the beginning of German colonialism weren't allowed to travel to the colonies, no? Okay. But during the uprising of the women's movement, they were, they were sent to the colonies to be nurses, to be, um, to be teachers, you know? For like professional reasons. Professional yeah. okay. reasons. Okay. And if they married an African man, yeah. they um, got their German citizenship literally taken away. Wow. So children from these relationships had no chance to be German citizens at all. Okay. This is where I would mark the beginning of black German history okay. in the continuity that we live in today. Okay. You know? okay. So with this whole idea, this whole idea of these, these mixed marriage laws got um, projected back to German politics. Mm -hmm. And in 1912, the so-called Reichs- und Staatsangehörigkeitsgesetz, mm -hmm. like the German citizenship Chip law, yes. was, um, was created. And it didn't define who was German, it defined who was not German. Okay. And they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they used the term Eingeborene, I don't even know, it doesn't even translate to English, that word. Um, just forget about that word. Um, you know, it's a word, we don't need one of those words. But it's, um, but this was the moment when, when Germans were, it was defined who was not German, and without speaking, it was defined who was. You know? And that is actually the moment when the German became white, became blonde, became blue-eyed. Uh -huh. And this idea, it found its murderous peak mm -hmm. in National Socialism. We all know what happened then. Yeah. So it literally has this continuity. There's a continuity of colonialism and National Socialism, what politicians have not even yet started to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah? But in National Socialism now, this whole idea of race, mm -hmm. it, it, there was a twist to it. No? So starting from this point of whiteness, and this imagined whiteness, that Germans were white, whiteness was differentiated. So at the top of whiteness, you had the Aaron, mm -hmm. and then it was um, differentiated right down to Poles and Jews. Mm -hmm. And we know what happened then. Yes. So what, when we're looking at 1949 and that the race term in the German constitution, black people were not meant, we, they were not looking at us, and they were not looking at the origins of the concept. They were looking at what the National Socialists made out of this concept. So they're looking at a, t a complete different time in history where race had gained this crazy meaning through the National Socialists. Mm -hmm. That's why it's in there alongside skin color, because skin color is also in the Constitution. You ask yourself, why are these both terms in there? Mm -hmm. It's because they had a different understanding of race at the time. No? Mm -hmm. So we're in this discussion now that they want to, um, ex um, want to delete race from the Constitution because they're still in this mindset of National Socialism, and we haven't gotten back to the history that is tied to this term. That's why I am absolute against this term yes. being erased or even um, 
would you say, ersetzt, oh my English, Replying sorry, replace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's an e easy word. <laughs> they replace, I hear it sometimes too, don't we? So they, they want to replace it with a different... Yeah, they want to replace it with a different term that actually reduces racism to this biological understanding and not to the discursive understanding. So this is how this ignorance is also reflected in in um, in politics and society and where we where the gaps in knowledge production become visible yeah. because yes. if we had black studies yes. we would have been able to prove that 100 years ago yes. when Du Bois was in Germany and actually proved that being here in Germany his first anti-racist ideas he created whilst he was here. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They think, oh, this is something US American. But he's very influenced by German politics, by Otto von Bismarck, by August Bebel, the Social Democratic, Democratic Party, yeah. which was something different than you understand in the US, but it really was social at the time. Yeah. And um, so, so this has a lot to do with, with, with what was going on in German colonialism, but we've totally erased that out of our memory, out of collective memory, out of our consciousness, yes. out of our school books, out of literally everything, which I think is what black studies can do. Yes. Now, this is where we can really come in. We can broaden the discourse. We can actually include our bodies into this discourse because we're at the moment, we're not literally not a part of political discourse. Yes. And this shows on the, in this race debate that they're, or anti-race debate yeah. that they're having at the moment. But then what you describe now, it seems as when I think through it, and it's of course also super complicated because it's a long history and it is also yeah. understanding that race has also always been a part of Germany. Yes, I think this race is and nation have always, always been. Always, and Germany yes. is not exempt from that because exactly. it's a Euro European exactly. idea. But exactly. it then seems to me, okay, you know, you would have to convince so many, like basically white German society yep. that they do this work. It's and it's a long and run. It's, it's a long run. <laughs> it's a lot yes. of psychology yes. and it's a lot of yeah. um, consciousness yeah. work. And then you get tired. <laughs> yeah, but so actually my new book, I'm doing practice. that with my new book, no? My new yeah. book does exactly that. No, it's um, racism, structural problems need structural solutions would be the translation mm -hmm. of the title. And I do exactly that. I, I, I got so sick and tired of being sick and tired last mm. year when the Black Lives Matter movement, mm. Mm. everything was going on. And these politicians were just trying to, you know, f put out the fire. And mm. I was like, no, this yeah. is the first time. And that, suppress it. And suppress, suppress the discourse. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, this is like the first time in 100 years that this portal has opened yeah. and we're walking all through it. There is mm. no way that you are mm. shutting this in front of mm. our faces mm. again. Mm. And then that's what, um, out of this anger, like Audrey Lord always says, change anger into empowerment yeah. and strength use it. Yeah. and use, use it. it. And that's when I wrote that book. And I literally say all of this in this book. I'm like, no, nah, I'm done with you people. This is what you need to know. We are 100 years behind. Can we please catch up in this debate no? and include us as a part of this history? Because our history goes way back before 1949. That's what mm. a lot of people think mm -hmm. as well. When the German GIs came, black GIs came, that's where um, black German history starts. But it doesn't. It goes all the way back to the 11th century. We have been longer in this country than this country even exists. Yeah. Yeah, and in this its is, current form. In yes. its current yeah, yeah, form, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are things that people really have to understand that there has always been, um, there has always been an essence of afro germaness mm -hmm. you now from time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. I'm actually having a debate at the moment um, in the um, in the theatre in Düsseldorf. Yeah, I wanted where... to get, get to that <laughs> too, but let's not because I think it's very important because oh. these topics seem so virtual and theoretical, mm -hmm. but. We always, you know, continually have proof yeah. that in yeah. our daily lives, particularly in the cultural sector, you know, it's showing up that yeah. race plays a huge role. It plays and a huge role. Maybe and we should talk. Maybe we should give an example now because it's um, it's very important. And there's there's been a debate that happened in Düsseldorf in Nordrhein-Westfalen, like on the mm -hmm. west side of Germany, where um, yeah, there's been a lot of racist incidents with one actor, Ron Yamu. Yeah. What yeah. happened there? Maybe you can... Well, what literally <laughs> happened in his case, I don't even know because it was like an, a year later yeah. that I even found out that these things were going on because I coincidentally, well, there's no such thing as a coincidence, but a few, a, a, a few days 
before he went um, viral with his story, I was on the phone with him and he was like, okay, this, that, and that happened. Yeah. And he told me the details of this case that he was um, literally racially abused um, during, during one of the, during and... one of the rehearsals yeah. and that that had a continuity. And I was at the house with my collective, with my theater collective of 22 um, black people who, who we wanted to, um, well, I do two performances there. The My Sister performance, which is dedicated to Maya Yim. Mm -hmm. This is more an empowerment space for black women where we, you know, um, use theater practice and performance to deal with our um, traumas, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. and, and to I, tell those stories. And to right? tell those so stories really on stage yeah. and yeah. share it yeah. really for and with our community. Yeah. And the other piece was supposed to be my, my theater director debut of my yeah. dissertation, Afro Couture, yeah. yeah. where yeah. um, W.E.B. Du Bois, Audrey Lord, and Maya Yi meet in a virtual space um, and have this conversation yeah. about yeah. their lives across in Berlin, time and, and across space. time yeah. and across space, and yeah. about black German identity and what's the similarities and differences to, to black US American yeah. identity. Yeah. And, and I did a, um, a scenic reading, dramatic reading in, in Brazil mm -hmm. of this, that's where it all started. I had mm -hmm. this residency with the Goethe Institute. Mm -hmm. And then I, we did this dramatic reading and it just, it just worked out. It just, it was like, I don't know, it was kind of like meant to be mm -hmm. thing. And then I, um, I worked with an Afro-Brazilian percussionist and it got translated and we put it on the Goethe stage. And I was like, okay, this is like kind of like really introducing Afro-German identity to the diaspora. Yeah. No, yeah. that was yeah. really yeah. interesting for yeah. me to see yeah. how it played out, how it connected. Yeah. It's called Afro-culture. Yeah. And Afro-culture has so many different forms and shapes and sizes and colors. And, and in Brazil, bringing Afro-German identity to Afro-Brazilian identity, connecting that, it worked beautifully. And then I went with that to the US. Mm -hmm. and did the same thing in the U.S. with mm -hmm. a, um, in English with the U.S. American singer-songwriter mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and the whole thing t turned in itself again. So it was mm -hmm. like the same play, but it just had a different aesthetic mm -hmm. and a different, I don't know, it just, it just changed. Mm -hmm. It was the same, same, but different thing. Maybe it was also a different geography. Like it's, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, but it it's, was, um, it's, it's hard to explain. And then we were supposed to do it in Germany we were supposed to put that um, on stage, but blow it up as an entire play. So it wasn't supposed to be a dramatic reading. We were working on the piece and- And you, you know, with, having with, your debut as a director at a very established yeah, and known yeah, theater house, one of the one, yeah. it's, it's very mm, well funded well, publicly yeah, by, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, by the yeah. state. So, yeah. And then I find out what happens to Ron and I'm like, stop. It's like everything yeah. on hold. This is not happening with me in there on the stage with these two formats, mm -hmm. this cannot be the case. And I'm like, okay, everybody, we're backing out and gonna look to see what's going on here. And then things just started getting messier and messier and messier. So have you entered discussions with yes. the house? And, yeah, and, and we had, um, because I didn't want to take my information from the press. So I had, um, I had a conversation. First conversation was with the general director. Yes. What's going on in your house? Yes. You no, know? and why don't we know about it? You know, I'm bringing 22 black yeah. people to a yeah. space that is not safe. You know, that's my responsibility, and this yes. cannot be happening. No, yeah. Yeah. and then we have this long conversation, and he um, tells me what's going on, and I'm like, yeah, okay, but. I have to go back to my collective and we're going to make a collective decision because that's how we work. No, I'm not going to say this and that and that and that. Mm -hmm. So it took us three days in deep, long conversations and Zoom talks to actually decide what we're going to do. And then for us, it was, it was clear that we, um, yeah, we took this collective decision that we're not going to enter this space because we didn't go there to explain racism to people. We went there to do art. Mm -hmm. And f we have a right to freedom of art as well, you know? Yeah. And it's been, this, this right has been, been limited due to what's happening in the house. And we're not putting up with that anymore mm -hmm. because we're at a point where we're just so fed up of explaining white people their racism. Mm -hmm. And that in an art space where we're supposed to be 
where we have the right to be creative. So and it's also important because, and that's very much, uh, and that can be very different to the American system too. It's a public house, which means yes, it's funded pub- by taxes. Yeah, exactly. It's and our there money. are, of course, also black people <laughs> yeah. and brown people in this country <laughs> exactly. who pay taxes, and it's, it's the right exactly. to show these stories in these spaces. So, But instead of just is. only saying, um, you know, being the critique again and saying, yeah, okay, you know, you have to deal with the case. Yeah. That's definitely one, one of our demands. You have yeah. to, you know, make sure that um, you clean up your mess, what's going on there. But also, um, we want the right to have a space where we can do our art. So Mm -hmm. please, Mm -hmm. can you give us our own theater? And that's what Mm -hmm. we demanded. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting because- What's happening? um, (laughs) How is this going? Yeah, I'm (laughs) really interested in in, in hearing that. Um, We're still in conversation. And so we had, um, we wrote an open letter. We wrote an open letter to the general director to the mayor of, of Dusseldorf and also to the state. And we're like, your responsibility. Mm-hmm. And if you're not taking this responsibility, I'm going to the federal government because mm-hmm. you're actually now violating my constitutional rights, our constitutional rights, mm-hmm. no? Because we have freedom of art, not mm-hmm. only white people, mm-hmm. no, we pay taxes mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you said too. Mm-hmm. So uh, they, then we started a petition, no? An Which is now petition, an right? online yes. petition, was mm-hmm. now been signed by over 25,000 people Mm -hmm. and we got um had a conversation so we brought them or we invited them to talk and um had um the first conversation it was like having to break through this wall of explaining to them that racism is structural but maybe can you like maybe explain again because you were just earlier really like laying out the historical continuities right Mm -hmm. That, that it did not just begin um, post-1945 with the American GIs or during the Nazi regime, there is a colonial history. And how is all of this showing in this specific case now, in a way? Do you know what I mean? Like how, um, because it's such a prime example, what is going yeah. on there. Also, when you say you go yeah. into these discussions and then the uh, executive level of that theater can't really react. Yeah, I think you know? it's, 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 this is a, a clear case of institutional racism, no? where mm-hmm. you have the typical Eurocentric white racist structure in the institution, where the mm-hmm. top of the institution is the intendant, the general director, mm-hmm. um, which is in usually a white old man, mm-hmm. as we say, for, to use that metaphor. It's, interesting, it's such no? an infl- inflationary used term but then if you actually look yeah. at those structures yeah. or if you look at the academy of the arts in berlin it's um yeah very much there's a lot of truth to cliches and, you know yeah That's what and I these mean. jobs these typical roles are becoming very visible you know like 20 years ago people would say oh that's typical women's work no that's a women would do this and women would do that now the white man's job is coming visible and there's always mm. at the top of the house it's a general director whatever, whatever, whoever leads the house. Mm-hmm. No, this Führer Prinzip, mm-hmm. there's something also very German. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the top is always the white man, white mm-hmm. old man, no, mm-hmm. who works his way up the system very easily, all doors open for him to be at the top of the mm-hmm. house. And we have this, this exact structure in Dusseldorf. There's one mm-hmm. white man in control of everything, mm-hmm. no, including the money, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, this is how this whole structural idea plays out that um, to be able to go into that house, I was not prepared to give them my book. That was the whole thing. I, I mean, I could have given them the, my book and say, okay, get somebody famous to, to put it on stage. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, mm-hmm. if I bring this book to the house, I'm bringing everything that goes with it, including the actors in front of and behind the stage, by mm-hmm. the way. So I, I brought everything, everybody mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. That's why we're 22 people. So mm-hmm. I brought my whole group inside the theater and that's the only way to, to literally get in without your story being twisted and all of a sudden becoming this Eurocentric story when it's not supposed to be. No? So, um, so this is also reflected in even how we could work in the house. You know? It's by only bringing your whole group of people in to be ap- actually able to work in the house. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So we, um, that's what we did, and we had, and then Corona came in between. Yeah. After, you know, that's, yeah. that's also an important part because then we couldn't rehearse and, you know, the houses were closed and all that. So when this year we, um, we were supposed to um, rehearse again, this story pops up now. And I was like, oh God, this is not happening. 
So in the conversation with him, I'm telling him exactly that. No? The fact is that we, I have to bring my entire crew to even be able to work in the house. Mm. Yeah? And, and to execute your vision and, and exactly, your narrative, your exactly. story. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's literally about being, um, having a space within a space to be able to do what I want to do without being limited or restricted to yeah. all the BS going on outside mm. of this bubble, practically. Mm. Mm. No? And still, you cannot, you know, even react to us being there because if I if I hadn't asked him what's going on they literally ignored us being there no and I was like no you are not ignoring 22 black people in your yeah, house yeah, no yeah, yeah. it's easy to ignore one but yeah. you're not ignoring 22 black people who come for exactly this reason mm. to create a space within a space mm. to be even able to do our art mm -hmm. you know mm. And I was, we were tired. At the end, we said, no, we need our own house. We want our own theater. We want our own cultural space. And this is the demand that we're in conversation with right now. And um, it's actually looking quite good, better it, than it I thought. It is looking good, okay. For, in your own space in Düsseldorf, in the city of Düsseldorf? In, at, at the moment, um, it would be um, Düsseldorf, NRV. Yeah. Um, And yesterday was the last conversation, actually. So this okay. was the second meeting yesterday where we actually presented our concept to them for the first time. We actually explaining to them what black culture is, what black bodies mean, what black bodies in white spaces mean, mm. and why it's important to, um, you can, it's two, there are two things. I, I totally respect people who want to go inside the institutions and work inside mm. the structures and try to deconstruct the structures from the inside. Mm. That's one way to do it. But another way to do it is to create your own structures and have the means and facilities to be able to move freely beyond these structures. You know? And this is what we want to do. I've been doing that. I've been. I've taken that, that path for the longest part of, of my life. Routes, yeah. Um, yeah. Being inside of institutions and explaining people what racism is, da da da. And I'm tired of that yeah. now. Yeah. I have the urge to be creative. And like a good friend of mine told me one day, you need a system to beat a system. Mm -hmm. And this is the system that we're creating now because if people don't want to listen. They can stay behind 100 years, but we're going into the future now. So whoever and wants to come into the, the future. And the entire world is taking. Thank I don't you. Think it's, I do not <laughs> think it is German, Germany's interest to stay behind in this moment in time. Yeah, I yeah really don't that think is so, exactly the thing. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. the thing where I said, okay, you can go find somebody who can, who can just explain diversity, na, 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 na. But just because we're black bodies, it doesn't mean that you are allowed to force us to explain racism to you. Mm -hmm. That's not our job. Mm -hmm. We're here as artists and art is free. The last time I looked in the constitution it was. Mm -hmm. yeah? So why are we even having this conversation? Mm -hmm. You have to provide a space for us where we can have full gain of our constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. And that's where this petition is going. Mm -hmm. no? And mm -hmm. I have never been more serious in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed and I'm, Never I'm, I'm, following that. I will, I'm following it too and I'm really, I'm, I'm really curious how it's going to end and I wish because what we're you were saying in the road. beginning Let's too, you know, it is about yeah. the institutionalization yeah. of black studies, also of, of black spaces yeah. and, and maybe that is the route that's... Yeah. And our vision is not more. to have, you know, this classical theater where you just have a stage and you have few people moving on stage. It's this whole interdisciplinary idea of black mm. art and black culture, mm. which is, and black knowledge, which is mm -hmm. interconnected. So this space is, is going to be all of that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, um, but the body in itself is going to have a, have a central role mm -hmm. because our bodies are literally not catered for in this country. Mm -hmm. yeah? So the body will have a, a central role in a performative and very visual sense. Yeah. But we will also be working from an um, intertwining academic knowledge with that mm. so that everything we do is really factuous and that to get out this whole exotic idea and, and fetishize and, 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 and the gaze, the gaze right? that's so why that's academia where, yeah. is really important to have it in, yeah. to, in this space as well. So yeah. it's going to be a, a, we call it the theater of the future. 
Yeah. That's what we're creating right now, and we, our bid is on the table. I wanted to ask you, because there's another topic that is also um, ta talking objects dealing with heavily, of course, and it's a debate that's also going on nationally, the, the restitution of objects, mm. you know, back to, um, mm. to certain African countries. And I know it's not necessarily your field of research, but yeah. I, I would still like to hear your opinion about it. Like, what mm. do you think about these acts, you know, when Germany says, also other, you know, very powerful European countries actually agree to return uh, objects back to, to their country of origin. Mm. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it helps with the larger discourse we were just discussing? Uh, mm. The past like 45, 30 minutes is because it all it's all somewhat it's part a, of this, you know, yeah, like you said, it's it penetrating is. so many spheres of life. And um, it has to do with the recognition of the colonial legacy in a way, right? If you say, yeah, we stole it and we give it back, does it help? Mm. For me, I would have to put a question before that mm -hmm. because I'm back to this discourse, mm -hmm. no? Who is actually having a conversation with who on this topic, no? Mm. That's what I'm kind of like missing because. Um, there is no such thing as um, where they're always in this in this context. They always try to say that they are having conversations on eye level, no? this mm -hmm. eye level mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. that's going on. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, now how did you create eye level in an unjust power system? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. so I'm actually at who's actually talking to who? No, you sending things back. Where are they even going? No. Which are, which are the, this, this is why I'm kind of like very curious about this conversation that's going on because this, high, this eye level in the power matrix, that's something where even the discourse is going kind mm. of like wrong. No, mm. who's talking to who? If I look at the Humboldt Schloss around the corner, I'm, I will never set a foot inside that place because yeah. it's just a whole spiritual feeling that is just, telling me to keep away, <laughs> kind yeah, of like, yeah. where they're it's collecting. It feels violent too, like it's a... Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. why I've, I've been asked so many times, you want to do something, da 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 and I'm like, nah, no, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm ready for my own space now. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I've just been doing this too long. You're going to have to all deal with that. I think we have a, we have a, it's, it's, it's really a shift in the discourse that needs to take place first. There is no understanding of structural racism in this country, so I don't even know how they can even have a conversation about restitution. Mm. Yeah? How, on what level does that even take place, this discussion, this dialogue that they're having, if they don't even know what racism is? This is what I th always have, you know, it's like the playing field's not leveled. Not, yeah. You know, where yeah. I'm like, what are we even, what is even the basis of this conversation, no? And that's for me, in this political discussion, like in all other political discussions, that um, it's just this shift in the matrix where I'm like, mm, no, nah, no, you can't be talking from up there to people down here. You need to level the playing field first. And then, um, so power, when we discuss race and racism, power is always central. Always, like always central. Have to take yes. Power as a parameter to discuss. Always, really. yes. Yeah. And this is not happening. So I'm kind of like, okay, so how, you know, and then I'm thinking about, so who are you taking it back to? So you're taking something back to a museum somewhere in Africa built by whom, run by whom? No, is, are these things even supposed to be in a museum? No, yeah. it's like, what kind of conversations are we even having? It's like, you know? Okay, before we finish, I know you also have like younger kids, well, young, younger, youngest kids, uh, children, but um, what about the future of this country and the, the upcoming generations, um, like you were saying, and it, it, it pains me, it pains my heart to hear that this country is always behind because it's, um, uh, it shouldn't be like that. You know, there are so many resources we could use to also make sure that kids of color and black children feel home here. Yeah. So what are well, we going to do to change that? To take it back to the beginning of the conversation where I talked about Du Bois and the comet mm -hmm. and history repeating itself. Mm -hmm. If we look back in 1920 in the Weimar Republic in Germany, then mm -hmm. um, the future that we are facing is not gonna be a very nice one. No. And I think that that is actually showing also already. Mm -hmm. If we look at the rise of the white, right wing, mm -hmm. if we look at the um, right populist movement, as they call it here, uh, it, which is 
in the middle of society. It's yeah. not even at the right anymore, but they're in yeah. the middle of society. They're mm. even in parliament, mm. in the government at mm. the moment. Um, this is exactly how history, unfortunately, but do you have hope? I mean, I, I hope I that we won't make so this, this same mistake again, again because this is, of course, will be detrimental. Um, I unfortunately but, see that coming, but I also at the same time see um, the resistance and the revolutions getting stronger. Yeah. So this is something really good and really positive that we have. Um, we, our, our movement is growing. Yeah. It's growing slowly. Yeah but it's growing, um, not only the black communities, but so solidarity movement That's in That's what I mean also, like what is about, because, general, because Germany has a, a large portion of the society yeah. is white, you know, white Germans also, like what, what mm -hmm. do you see, see there is like progress too? And there is- Definitely, yeah. There's, there's a lot of progress. That's, that's quite interesting because the stronger the right gets, the stronger the left gets, mm -hmm. you no? Know? So mm -hmm. it's always kind of mm. in this, and we, I just hope that, um, you know, when <sighs> things go down, <laughs> We're going to be strong. I'm serious. I'm yeah. actually also very realistic because we've been saying this for quite some time yeah, now. Yeah. For the past 30 years, our black community has been talking, 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 talking. For a very long time. We, for a very long yes. time. We've been laying out these facts. There are so many books out there. There are so many people doing amazing work, doing amazing research and really showing these things, be it artistically, performatively or in academia. And for the first time last year, people have started to listen. Okay. No? How did you feel that? Like, how did you also I think experience that, that? Yeah, I think because the whole movement, the whole discussion has now literally shifted from the margins into the center. Okay. That's actually what took place last year. No, yeah. where we're not just being in our, you know, it's like screaming at the top of our voices to be heard, like we've been doing for the past 30 years. Um, black people have been invited on TV and, you know... You've been on TV a lot. I've seen I've you been on, on like TV major and I, <laughs> news outlets and everything. Yeah. I have been on TV and I ain't going to stop. Yes, uh, it's so amazing. I'm not like, but, 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 I mean, yes. this is the thing, though. You know, you get invited to a two-hour interview and 30 seconds make it. They make it into the report. Like, yeah, you, and I'm you, like, you, okay, every 30 seconds counts. You have learned by now, no? 30 seconds <laughs> time limit you got to put all the important information <laughs> into, out, into this ba, 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 yeah. Ba, no? yeah. 30 seconds and, and what it also shows though is that they couldn't cut it the way they needed it otherwise it would have been longer you know mm -hmm. so you have to learn that as well you know i mean i'm a communication scientist mm -hmm. I, you, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so it's like depending on who you talk to you know exactly how to set your words that they can't cut you up in the end mm -hmm. to you know to place mm -hmm. you where they want mm -hmm. you so I'm just literally just, you know, so I, it was literally 30 seconds that they could take out the last one. And I was like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's all you got. 30 seconds. But it's quite, um, it's quite funny, actually. But it's, it's yeah, arrived but it, in the more like it's arrived. And I think that media. that's important. And the next step that needs to, to be done now is that the, um, the conversation is professionalized. Because that's what went wrong, I think, last year, is that... What does that mean, to professionalize? Yeah, because last year, last summer, it was like every black person on this planet became an expert okay. on racism, no? It's like, if we were tested COVID-19, I would be the virologa. What's it called in English, the virologa? Virologist. Virologist. Yeah, 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 yeah. No? Like, and yeah, I would be now like... sitting here talking about bacteria. No. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. This is, racism is actually something really factual. There's a, an, an academic system behind yes. it. Yeah, and very complex. I mean, when and you were earlier complex. outlining the whole history, it's like, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, you're right. You're it's right. very yeah. complex. So people were, and, and this way, this whole dis discussion was depoliticized and deprofessionalized okay. okay. because then it became something that everybody was seeing, all black people sitting on TV and, she touched my hair and did da, 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 da. Or I was like, no, 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 no. We're not having these discussions yeah. on TV. Yeah. Can you please professionalize this yeah. discussion? Yeah. It's about the structures. Can we, yeah. never did I hear anything about power structures. I mean, excuse me, that is what it's about. Mm -hmm. And this is like what's slowly starting to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, 
racism is structural, where you really think, really, everybody? Come on, we have to catch up 100 years now because this is a global topic. And we, we see it on Black Lives Matter, it was a global movement. We have to be part of this conversation, mm -hmm. yeah, as Germany. As and, Germany, yeah. and that's and what, as a society. And as a society yeah. and as politics. And they're just lacking in every sense. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I mean with we need to professionalize the debate. We need to get more of the facts in, the mm -hmm. academic work in, mm -hmm. experts in. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even only have to be academic experts, but also experts who are working on the ground, mm -hmm. yeah, doing the work in different NGOs and organizations. Where are these voices? Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. They're randomly, um, the media is just running out on the street. And if you look a little bit black, they're mm -hmm. going to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, okay, explain mm -hmm. racism. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, we're going to stop that now because yeah. that is not the way to deal with this topic. Yeah. No, racism kills. And this is how seriously we have to take it. And that's not happening. Mm -hmm. No, so I think this shift is kind of slowly. That's why I'm always in there dropping knowledge. No, mm -hmm. wherever I get my 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, boom, boom. You, you give your two cents. <laughs> I something. give my two cents, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, very important. Uh -uh. Very no? important. Yeah. Very important. Okay, so we're ending this with a a little bit of optimism or possibility. Okay, let me, let me, yeah, the optimism, no, because this I, is the thing. So, and, we to, and I wanted this discussion also to take Germany into consideration. And like you were saying, again, we are in a very tense political climate. You know, the right wing parties are not on the right, right, right wing. They have become this, part of the yeah. governing, you know, system. Yeah. So this is to be taken seriously. Yeah. But here's but, the positive thing yes, now please. to end on. Um, the thing is, like, we are the vision of our ancestors, you know? They were, they wouldn't be sitting in front of a TV camera and even talking about these topics, no? They wouldn't be in academia, they wouldn't be in the arts, in theatres, on stages, you know? So what we need is we owe them new visions. Mm -hmm. We owe them new visions, we owe the generations to come new visions mm -hmm. of future which is free of racism, and this is where I gain my strength in, mm -hmm. you know, yes, we have to know where we're coming from, but we also have to reignite our imagination on mm. where we want to go. Yeah. And this is what art and culture can do. Right. And that's why I'm more in love with the arts at the moment, yeah. especially with Afrofuturism, which just frees my mind yeah. from Eurocentric structures. Yeah. And this is the step Germany needs to make. So use your imagination. Use your imagination. We know what we're fighting it. against. Yeah. But what are we fighting for? What yeah. does this society look like that we're fighting for? What does, um, what does defund the police actually mean? It means that we want to live in a society free of capitalism, free of racism, free of other power structures. So what does this society look like? It's mm -hmm. not about attacking the police. Mm -hmm. It's about imagining a, a, a society which structures are in place that you don't need a police. Mm -hmm. So what does this society look like? And I think that's actually a very positive way of looking no, into the is. future. It is. It is. No? Very human. Very, very beautiful. And very yeah. real. Very real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Natasha, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Magnus. <laughs> thank you. It was amazing. And I'm wishing you all the best. Your book just came out. My book just came out. It sold out in two Spiegel, days. Made uh, it on the Spiegel bestselling list. Which is amazing. And um, all the important knowledge. I Finally. Guess, yes. Yeah. See, so, you know, and that's showing. This is showing how black knowledge is becoming more and more important. That we're actually making it into their systems onto their bestseller lists yeah, yeah. is actually kind of like um, showing the po progress and the yeah. importance um, of blackness in general in this country, of black exactly. knowledge, black systems, black institutions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Super. Okay.